It's just like a base in exponents. Okay, so 2 root 5 can multiply with 2 root 7 because they're both squares. That's okay. But 2 cube root 5 times 2 root 7, that is not okay because they have different indices. Everybody cool? And you already know how to do this. Even if you weren't taking this class for a second time, it's so easy. You would know how to do it in two seconds when I show you this. All of you can tell me what 2x times 2x is, correct? What is it? 4x squared. Why? Because the numbers go with the numbers and... The letters go with the letters. If it works that way in math once, how often does it work? Every time. So this is 2 times x, isn't it? So this, 2 root 5 times 2 root 7, is just the same. This is the same as this. So, numbers go with numbers. 2 times 2 equals 4. And then, just like we did x times x, we do the square root of 5 times 7, which is 4 root 35. That's it. That's all you do. It's that simple. Except, just like when you're multiplying fractions, what do you need to do at the end? Simplify. Right? The number one word in all math from grade one on is simplify. Don't stop until it is as simple as it can get. So we look at this very first one. It's so easy. The numbers go with the numbers. The letters go with the letters. And we get negative 35 root. Oh, you know what? I'm going to write it out the long way. Negative 7 times 5 root. 3 times 8. Now we simplify. Negative 35 root. Now, 3 and 8. Well, that's 3 times 2 times 4, right? Right? Well, what is 4? Does it have a square root? So what comes out? The 4? 2 comes out. Once 2 is out here, what do these guys do? Multiply. So I get negative 70. And what did I leave under there? 3 and 2, which is 6. Because 6 is easier than saying 3 times 2. sci -hash. If you stop here negative 35 root 24, then you, it's not simplified because 24 is 4 times 6 and you would bring out a 2. The only reason I didn't actually write 24 is because I ended up having to break it down into 3 and 8 anyway. Understand? All right, so this one. 3 times, what's this number in front here that we don't write? 1 root 2 times 8. Okay, 3 root 16. 2 times 8. This time I did put them together. Why? Because I know 2 times 8 is a perfect square. So what's coming out of there? 4. What was already out front? 3. Did I leave anything under there? No, so it's 12. Everybody good? And that's all you do to multiply. So you should be able to do C and D by yourself. It shouldn't take very long. Go. I am going to eat my salad because I wasted my break marking your tests. What's in my salad today? Ooh, celery? Peppers? Carrots? Oh, sorry. Nobody asked for help. There's onions in here. Sorry about that, everyone. When I'm done, I'll brush my teeth. 
Because nothing's gross than when the teacher comes to help you and it's all stanky, right? Same thing for teachers, though. You guys ask us to come help you and you've just eaten, like, a bag of taco Doritos or something. And you're breathing all over us. Hey, Mr. Myers, can you help me? But we're not allowed to say anything because it might hurt your precious feelings. But if I breathe on you, you're like, oh, my God, you stink. My feelings don't matter, but your feelings are precious and need to be protected at all costs. Can I skip this step on the first one? Is everybody cool if I write negative 48 root 72? Cool. This, of course, is 2 times 36. So what's coming out of there? 6. So this becomes negative 288 root 2. Easy bees, lemon squeezy, right? Now, this time I am going to do that first step because there's a reason. This is 3 root 3 times 3, right? Well, isn't that a pair right there? So what's coming out? 3. There's already a 3 out there, so the answer is 9. The reason I showed you that step there is to remind you of this. The square root of x times the square root of x is the same as the square root of x squared, right? Well, squaring gets rid of a square root, right? So the square root of x times the square root of x is x. So what is the square root of 41 times the square root of 41? 41. Okay. Now, there's a problem with that. As soon as I show that to kids, if I ask them this, what is the cubed root of 4 times the cubed root of 4? Everybody says it's 4. Is it? No, because that is the cubed root of 4 times 4. Is there a group of 3 there? No. What is the cubed root of 4 times the cubed root of 4 squared? Now what do I get? What's that answer? 4. Because that is the cubed root of 4. And then 2 more 4s. Cubed root of 4. Everybody good? All right. What's different in E? There's adding and subtracting, right? Now, how did I teach you if you're seeing it for the first time? And how did I remind you if you're seeing it again of how to multiply? I used X's, correct? Right? And we, when we multiply, we multiply the numbers and the letters, yeah? Okay. So since coefficient and variable works as an example when we're multiplying... It will also work as an example when we're adding. What is 2x plus 3x? This is not a trick question. 5x's. Why did you know that, Madeline? What do we call this operation in math class? Adding, but we have a special word for it when there's, multiply, when there's variables involved. Starts with a C ends with an S, and has elect-like term in the middle of it. Collect like terms! Good job, sci -Hash. First try. Why are we allowed to do that? Is it because of the 2 and the 3, or the X and the X? 
It's the x and the x. Because would I be allowed to do this? No. Everybody understand? Same thing here. This part has to be the same before I can add. So do you think I would be allowed to add that? No. But could I add this? Can I do that one? Yes or no? Why not? Isn't that 2 times something, just like 2 times x? No, that's not a cube root, sorry. That's a 3 root 5. I can add them to get 5 root 5. So when I am adding... If the roots are the same, I can add them. So, all of you remember, the next thing we're going to do is polynomials. So this is a bit of a reminder. If none of this were here, what would you do with that? What would it be? You've just done it four times. I shouldn't be hearing silence. So what would the answer to this be? Fifteen root sixteen, which would be fifteen times four, which would be sixty, right? Okay. Now, what would you do if that wasn't there? What's that? 10 root 24, which would break down into 4 times 6, which would be, bring out a 2, times 10 root 6, which would get me 20 root 6, right? Okay. And then what would I do if... Only that was there. What would I have? Negative 5 root 40, which would be 4 times 10, which would be negative 10 root 10. Right? Everyone agree? Okay. So now I have 60 plus 20 root 6, minus 10 root 10. Are any of these like terms? No. no. The root 6 is different than root 10, and this guy has no roots at all. So that is done. Everybody cool? What's different in F? cubed root. So I know this is the cubed root of 16 times 54, correct? Now, if you've been following along and not really paying attention, some of you are going to go, oh, 16 times 54, that's 864, Mr. Myers. So I should just find the square cube root of 864. Except that's a really big number and it makes for a yucky factor tree, right? So simplify when the numbers are easier. What's this? 8 times 2. Why did I choose 8 and 2 instead of 4 and 4? Why did I choose 8 and 2? Hmm? 8's got a cube root. 54 could be 9 and 6. Could be 18 and 3. But wouldn't it be better to do 27 and 2? Why? Twenty-seven's got a cube root. So what's coming out from the eight? Two. What's coming out from the twenty-seven? Three. What stayed in there? 
2 and 2, which is 4. 6 cube root 4. Everybody cool? Great. You do G. Could you also simplify before you ever multiply? Could I simplify G now? Am I allowed to do that? Sure I am. Because who's in charge of math? You are. I am not one of those teachers that says, if you don't do it the way I show you, you must be doing it wrong. As I'm sure all of you have had at least one math teacher in your life that has done that to you. So this time I'm going to simplify first. Everybody good? All right. Listen to me carefully. It is 1136. At 1215, after your break, you are going to start your cumulative exam. That cumulative exam is going to cover measurement and trig. You may study them and be prepared. Ask me questions about that for the rest of this block. But... If you turn the page over, you see radical assignment. Page 36, four marks, tomorrow morning. Which means you could work on it now and have no homework. You could start it now, study a bit, and work on it if you finish your cumulative ahead of time. You could do none of this right now, prepare for a cumulative, and do this all for homework. I do not care. But when you walk in here tomorrow morning at 8.05, page 36 and 37 are being marked. Clear? Who's in charge of your work schedule? You are. I have given you the deadline... You do what you need to do to get that stuff done by 8.05 tomorrow morning. So it's either work on it now or take it all home for homework. Okay? If you wish to study for your trig cumulative, your trig test is sitting right in front of you. You can study it. I will be taking it back before you start your cumulative. If you wish to have a look at your measurement test to study from for measurement, I have it right here. You may do that. You may look at that, but it does not leave the room. Or you work on this for the next 27 minutes. Then you will take a break. Then you will come back and you will do your cumulative exam, which has a chance to fix previous grades. If you have missed one of your tests and you, there are three of you who know who you are, that cumulative is your only chance right now to get a grade for that section. If there is time left over at the end of the semester, then you may have a chance to do a rewrite on that section. Okay? Everybody good? Go. Go. 